Hello, here's a brief setup guide for those of you wanting to get your brand new Moza R3 bundle set up in any sim racing title. Let's go. So firstly, you'll want to have the latest version of Moza Pit House installed. Right now, I have the latest beta installed for longevity. If you'd like to have this exact beta, feel free to head over to Moza's Discord to get it downloaded. Right, so once you're in Moza Pit House, you'll want to make sure it's plugged in first. Then you'll want to turn on your wheel base by pressing the button at the very back. It should go through its regular calibration process and then it should show up right in pit house. Next up, you'll want to uh, put your steering wheel on. And once everything's showing up in pit house software, you should be good to go. First up, you'll want to head into the wheel base section. Now, yet again, this is the latest version of pit house, so it might look slightly different. Uh, depending on what you have installed. But generally, over in the top left, you will see the profiles. A lot of these profiles are really good, but usually the one that I tend to go for is the default iRacing profiles, as you'll see here, as they usually tend to be the best between titles, whether that be Assetto Corsa, iRacing, Forza Horizon 5, the lot. Over here in the top right, you'll see Game Force Feedback Intensity. This is just the strength of the force feedback. You'll want to have this set to 100% because you're not really going to be breaking your arms with this wheelbase. Maximum Output Torque Limit, set that to 100 as well. Hands Off Protection. Now, it depends on what wheel you have and what wheelbase. Since we're on the R3, you can honestly turn this off. All it does is whenever you take your hands off of the steering wheel, it detects it and it tries not to oscillate too much because with some older wheel bases, the wheel tends to really oscillate and make a lot of noise. You can turn this on if you find this to be an issue in certain simulators. Maximum steering angle. I'd usually set this to around 1080 as that's the default for most sims and it gives you just a little bit more range to work with. Going into advanced settings, I wouldn't really touch any of this, but if you are interested in changing anything, just have your mouse over the little exclamation icon right next to the names. Go natural damping, natural friction, the lot. I wouldn't recommend changing any of this because honestly, the default profiles are really good on these latest wheel bases. Right, so next up, you're going to want to head into the steering wheel icon. And here, depending on what version you have, you'll see a couple of different menus. Firstly, you'll have the RPM LED brightness, and this simply just controls the RPM LEDs and how bright they are, at least the ones that are in the middle. Stick mode is just for the D-pad, so either you can have each be an individual button or it's to be recognized as a D-pad in certain games. This can help for older games that might see your wheel as a controller, whereas it could be better to set them each as an individual button for say iRacing or Assetto Corsa, we have a little bit more range to work with. Now onto engine RPM indicator timing. Now, this is mainly just for the RPM LEDs, whether you'd like to have them go on a little bit earlier in case you need a little bit more time to shift up, or if you'd like them to be a little bit later. Of course, you can always set this to custom, which moves us onto the RPM mode. We can either have percent or RPM. I wouldn't really recommend going on RPM unless you want to have specific car profiles, in which case, at least with the latest version, it will be easy and it should automatically switch. But on older versions of Pit House, or at least on the version that I have here, it's not exactly the easiest to switch. If you've got one car that you want to specialize in, go right ahead. But for the majority of cars, you'll just want to set this to percent. Each individual LED will light up at these specific percentages. And if you'd like to adjust the RPM percentages right here, you can just move it up or you can move it down. Now, each of these LEDs will switch on on a different percentage, giving you the full range of the indicator. And then this final one is to blink. That means that once the entire RPM gauge is full, at that threshold, it will start blinking. And honestly, that's about it. And now all you need to do is just head into your favorite sim racing title, bind everything, and it should be good to go. Hopefully that's helped you get your brand new Moza R3 bundle set up in Pit House. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment or join the Moza Discord, where there are plenty of sim racers like yourself to answer your questions. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.